This week on Healthy Living, we shed a light on the harmful practice of breast ironing. Activists in Nigeria fight to end breast ironing and help victims find a voice. And the U.S. has announced a multi-million dollar global youth AIDS awareness campaign. These stories and more in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello, I'm Lenore Moudou. Welcome to Healthy Living. Have you heard of breast ironing? If the answer is no, you are not alone. Often kept in the shadows, breast ironing involves the flattening or massaging of a young girl's developing breasts using hot objects like heated stones or spatulas. Also known as breast flattening, the practice is an old tradition carried out by family members to delay the onset of puberty in girls with the intent to deter sexual attention. Observers say breast ironing is a form of violence against girls that can cause severe pain, tissue damage, infection, and psychological trauma. Predominantly practiced in parts of Africa, about 3.8 million women are affected by breast ironing, including in Cameroon and Nigeria, according to the United Nations. Gibson Emeka has this story narrated by Salem Salomon. Patience Williams was only 10 when she was subjected to a practice called breast ironing. Worried that she would attract attention from men, her mother pressed a hot object over her breasts to stall growth. It's very painful. Immediately, she's done. I used to feel my body is hot. A decade later, Williams is calling for an end to the painful practice. Victoria Williams, who had also endured breast ironing, says she regrets putting her daughter through such an ordeal. They did it to me. It worked. But when I gave birth to my own, I tried it, but it didn't work. My remaining two girls, I didn't do anything to them. All I am doing is that I used to draw them close to me, make them my friends. Anything bothering them, they will tell me. While it's hard to determine how many women are impacted by the practice in Nigeria, about 3.8 million women across Africa are affected by breast ironing, according to the Africa Health Organization and International Health Agency. Choma Aguobu, a Nigerian gender rights activist, describes the harmful nature of the practice and how it violates basic rights. Imagine somebody heating up a stone and depressing a part of your body because they don't want that part of your body to grow. Nobody has the right to determine the rate of growth of any other person's body. Nigeria classifies breast ironing as criminal offense, as it does the practices of female genital mutilation and forced marriage. The country's Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act of 2015 specifically penalizes offenders who commit, quote, harmful traditional practices, end quote, with more than a four-year jail term or a fine of up to $559 or 500,000 naira or both. However, despite the law's provisions, there is no known record in Nigeria of perpetrators facing punishment. Justice Dukulu, a political leader in Jokwe village, says his community is committed to working with the government to stop breast ironing. But in some certain places like here, people still do it. For my community leaders are people who listen to governments. So they, are doing, they are doing their best to say that uh, it will come to an end. The practice can cause not only tissue damage, but also trauma. Other side effects include malformation, delay in breast milk production, and infection. Activists like Agwobu and survivors like Williams say legislation isn't enough, and they are trying to raise awareness in communities where breast ironing is still accepted by spreading the word through the media and urging community leaders to condemn the painful practice. For Gibson Emeka in Abuja, Nigeria, Salem Solomon. VOA News. We asked your thoughts on breast ironing and what can be done to end this practice. Here are some reactions from Cameroon. With regards to ironing young girls' breasts, it is important to mention that 
Each community has its own realities. For example, in the northern part of the country, grandparents in some families have ironed their grandchildren's breasts and as the children grew up, they continue the practice with their own children. Let's talk about breast ironing in the region. In some parts of Cameroon, personally, my opinion, I don't approve because it has multiple consequences for the young girl and can cause many diseases such as breast cancer and difficulty getting milk when breastfeeding. I don't think it's a good practice because God, in creating a human being, has already established all things according to time. And when someone is born at a given moment, the time comes for all this to reappear. Ironing is not good, especially for young girls. In my opinion, this practice should be eradicated. Because when a mother gives birth to her child, it's to see her grow up. Growing breasts is puberty. For me, this practice is very dangerous for a young girl and leads to many consequences such as breast cancer. And it can even hinder breastfeeding during future pregnancies. I thought we had already banned this practice because it's not right at all. You must let a girl's body develop normally. To remedy this kind of situation, in my opinion, the girl should be sent to school. Yes, so that she can try to develop her mind. To put an end to this practice, we can simply make parents aware of the risks it could entail for the young girl and crack down on all those who practice it. In society, for people who engage in this kind of practice, we need to have an educational dialogue to explain to them the consequences of these practices on their children. We need to explain to them the facts. In my opinion, to put an end to this practice, we need to raise awareness among young people, among mothers, because they have an old-fashioned culture. They think that young girls shouldn't have the zones for puberty, so we need to raise their awareness and show them the risks involved in this practice. Dr. Yunus, Habib Yunus, is general surgeon at the State Specialist Hospital in Maiduguri, Borno State, Nigeria. He discusses the dangers of breast ironing and what can be done to help the victims. Actually, breast is, uh, as we know, is one of the glands in the body, usually find more prominent in women of our reproductive age. So most of the times, it's part of the sexual reproductive organ, usually for reproduction, for breastfeeding, or other things. There are some harmful traditional practices that usually practices around the world, especially the African countries, where the breast is, is not flattened or even pounded or massaged in order to make it disappear or to retard its progression or growth. By definition, is a process of flattening of the brace, usually in adolescence, of, and um, by using either heated materials or ob hard objects to disuse the growth of the breast or, or even to make it disappear completely. Usually, you see the ladies or the mothers, grandmothers, and these are the ones usually doing this. Breast, especially for adolescents, is a sort of um, self esteem. And adolescent is subjected to such, certain things like this. Most of the times, they seem to have low self esteem. They seem to be isolated in society. Um, a feeling of uh, withdrawal as well as because of withdrawal. I mean, isolation in society completely. In Nigeria, we also have it. We have it in Togo, in Kenya, in Africa, and we also have it. Where you have 20 to 50 percent of the of the ladies of adolescent age having that um, breast iron. At long run, some suggestions have said that it can even lead to cancer formation. So, but um, there are so many complications in terms of um, this medical complication. When it happens, we look at it 
complications in two forms, the immediate one and the, the long-term complication. Sometimes abscess formation, we try to drain it, we give them analgesia and we also give them antibiotics. We also seek for psychological support where psychotherapy is also advocated for such victims. The first thing is uh, awareness and awareness, awareness comes in different levels. We have the international awareness, we have even the nationwide, the federal government, the state government. We also have even the NGOs, non-governmental organizations, the schools and all other institutions responsible for this. It's, uh, I think at these levels we are able to create more awareness for such practices. While the numbers of people living with HIV AIDS have dropped dramatically, about 630,000 people died from AIDS-related illnesses in 2022, according to UNAIDS. Ambassador Dr. John Nkengasong, U.S. Global AIDS Coordinator and Senior Bureau Official for Global Health Security and Diplomacy, was in South Africa recently, where he announced a global youth campaign to raise awareness about the disease. UN data reveals that AIDS remains one of the leading causes of death in the country. Reporter Vicky Stark spoke to Dr. Nkengasong in Cape Town, South Africa. PEPFA is important for Africa because uh, it has been uh, a platform that has transformed the response to HIV AIDS uh, since 20 years. And it has saved lives, about 25 million lives, prevented 5.5 million children uh, from HIV infection, has strengthened healthcare systems across so many African countries. As we all know, one in five people in the world living with HIV AIDS lives in South Africa. There are about two million people out there in South Africa that we still need to find and bring in on that treatment. If we have to reach a target of uh, bringing HIV AIDS to an end as a public health threat by 2030, South Africa is important. We PEPFAR will be launching tomorrow a, uh, a youth initiative which is really aimed at um, re-energizing the youths, uh, which will tell the youths that HIV AIDS is a threat, uh, it's not over. You may not have seen the devastation that HIV AIDS caused, but HIV AIDS is still around and be aware of the risk. And it's really an awareness campaign and I'm really hoping that it will become uh, a platform that will catalyze and energize young people across the entire continent. Several activities are being done in uh, controlling or preventing HIV infections among uh, adolescent girls and young women and young people as a whole. And PEPFA has invested over $800 million in empowering young women, uh, young girls, adolescent girls, young women, so that they can uh, engage in some sort of economic activities in their communities that will at least provide them with livelihood, the livelihood that they can uh, uh, pre prevent HIV infection. There are a couple of things we must do. We must close the gaps in children, uh, the, 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 the rates, the ability and capability of finding children, bringing them to care and maintaining them in care uh, uh, so that this value suppression is not great. Uh, we have to look at adolescent girls and, and, and young women and young people because we also see the, the challenges we have in maintaining men in treatment and even finding men, young men, and putting them in treatment. We have to look at uh, key populations like those in prisons, uh, uh, sex workers, uh, uh, LGBTQI, and make sure that all those policy barriers that relate to stigmatization, discrimination, criminalization are broken down. If we build barriers in that community or that subset of the population, we will never be able to win the fight against HIV AIDS. So I think those are things that we must do. Uh, know your, your, your HIV gaps and close your HIV gaps in all countries that are affected. That's our show for today. For more health news, wellness tips, and medical breakthroughs, stay connected to Voice of America at voaafrica.com. You can follow me on X at Lenoch Mudu. Until next time, stay well and strive to make every day a healthy day.